Now, here's an interesting thing. Here's a college level biology book. It says this, the first living cells emerged about 4 billion and 3.8 billion years ago. But notice the very next sentence says this, there is no record of the event. See, evolutionists believe that it happened by faith, but there's no record of the event. Now, here's another textbook. The history of life on Earth began approximately 3.5 billion years ago. Then notice it says this, how this occurred has been and will continue to be a topic for inquiry. Think about what happens in evolution. They all agree it's true. No two agree on exactly how it happened. So think with me. According to evolutionists, it is okay to inquire about how evolution happened because we know it did, but it is not okay if somebody questions whether it did. In the early 1950s, Yuri, Dr. Harold Yuri, uh, wanted to know how the Earth and the solar system had come to be. He reviewed many theories on how the sun and planets were formed. He studied the chemical reactions of gases that existed in Earth's primitive atmosphere. And he was the first to show that amino acids could have formed in the atmosphere. Although he never proved how life originated, he did add evidence to the theory that life could have started by itself on the primitive Earth. Now, so let's see, he studied the chemical reactions of gases that existed in Earth's primitive atmosphere. But you have to ask yourself a question. Did he ever have the opportunity to actually sample the gases that existed uh, in what they call here the early Earth, you know? And the answer, of course, is no. But notice it says down here about this, although he never proved. He never proved how life originated and how it could have started. A maybe, a supposed. Uh, if we believe this, if we suppose that, then our conclusion would be this. You see, uh, evolution is a religion. It's not science. It's a religion. It's believed in by faith. And it's not scientific because there's no good science to support it whatsoever. Let's take a look at the what's now referred to as the Miller-Urey experiment. Number one, uh, how did he know that the Earth's early atmosphere contained a specific percentage of gases? I mean, even if you believe in a reducing atmosphere, even if it's correct, how would you know the correct proportions? You never sampled them. You weren't there to see them. You weren't there at the time. Number two, he excluded oxygen, but there's good evidence that oxygen has always existed on the Earth, and he excluded oxygen knowing that it would destroy whatever organic compounds were actually then created, so to speak, by his experiment. Number three, the products produced contain tar, cyanides, uh, carbon monoxide. Well, that's going to disable anything that was actually produced uh, benefit. And this is critical, really. The amino acids formed were 50% left-handed and 50% right-handed amino acids. Almost all life forms on Earth use only left-handed amino acids and use right-handed sugars. But his, his experiment gave us 50-50. That is what you would expect in nature. That is what happens in nature. That's what happens when you mix things in a lab. Remember that in returning the products uh, that were formed by the experiment, that they were not allowed to continue to recycle because if they went back to the water and back to the boiling and so forth, what would happen? Returning the products that were forming the spark would destroy them or through the water would destroy them. So they trapped things out before that could happen. Sugars react strongly with amino acids, um, so that's going to affect amino acid synthesis. Uh, therefore, he used a sugar-free environment. So let's see, he excluded oxygen and he excluded sugars. UV light, ultraviolet light. Now, ultraviolet light kills living organisms. This is one reason why we want ozone in the upper atmosphere. It protects us from the ultraviolet light coming from the outer space. But ultraviolet light kills living things. So let's see, if you let, if you let ultraviolet light in, the ultraviolet light will destroy amino acids at a rate four to five times faster than they could form. That's one reason why in the experiment you might have noticed that everything was coated to keep ultraviolet light out. Any light that he did allow to hit the chemicals through the glass tube were carefully filtered in such a way that ultraviolet light was excluded because if any ultraviolet light had gotten in. Evolutionists have a real problem. In order for living things to supposedly evolve by random chance in nature, you have to exclude ultraviolet light. The only way to exclude ultraviolet light in nature is to have ozone. But that means, of course, that you have to have oxygen. However, if you have oxygen, then it will destroy the organic compounds. So if you notice something here, it's impossible for evolution to be true because in order for organic chemicals to form by random chance, you'd have to eliminate UV, ultraviolet radiation, 
to do that, you have to have oxygen, but if you have oxygen, it will destroy the compounds. And you're, you're in, again, what we call a catch-22. You can't have it both ways. And the experiment strategically trapped removed products that were produced, keeping them from being destroyed by radiation or by going around a second time through either the water or the spark. This is an absolutely unnatural thing. It, you know, even if it had been successful, it wouldn't prove it happened in nature, and the fact of the matter is it was a total failure. <laughs>